My name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, written by Robert Frost. Now, before I go into summary and analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. So, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening um, really looks at nature here. The speaker... Um, is stopping by woods on a snowy evening. I mean, the speaker is basically um, with his horse. Um, he's very busy. And he just, on his journey, he just stops by the woods on a snowy evening. He looks at the snow. He looks at the landscape. He looks at the nature around him and the colors of the woods the color of the snow and everything that's going on in nature and there's like a sense of honest a sense of beauty a sense of grandeur that he gets from uh, looking at nature um looking at the woods looking at the snow looking at the landscape and you know throughout the poem he describes what it looks like and what he feels um, and it's something that's deep within the human condition because, you know, human beings, the way that the world is shaped, we see everything. We try to understand the, the world through our mind and our bodies, right? We we focus on the senses and we focus on our rational thinking, our reason. Uh, but, you know, the, the human condition, we as human, we're more complex than that um, in the Bible, it says that, you know, it says that we should love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and that's a verse, as a Christian, I always consider, because the Bible specifically talks about the soul and the heart. And I think there's a huge difference between the heart and the mind. And usually, you know, the heart and the mind, we, we don't, a lot of humans don't think about this, but there are differences between the heart, the soul, the mind, uh, and our bodies. You know, our bodies, it picks up um, our senses, you know, picks up information. It picks up things that we see, things that we experience. Our mind, it's all about rational thinking, reason, things that make sense. We love things that make sense. You know, one plus one is two. We, we like to put things in order and make it make sense, right? But I think the heart is, is set apart from the mind because the heart, it's, it's just emotions. Uh, and, and, you know, when you truly study the heart, um, it's it's your raw emotions. And like in society, we're usually taught to be ambitious, right? You know, be focused, chase after money, material goods, ha have a good life, go on vacations. And you need to use your strength. You need to use your mind to achieve these things. You know, you need to be smart or strong or great at something. And primarily, we, we use the body and the mind to achieve these things. And so our souls... Um, our souls and, and our hearts, we usually neglect these things. And when it comes to poetry and art, to truly understand poetry and art and, and, and literature, you have to uh, explore the heart, explore the soul, explore things that we cannot comprehend with our minds. And, and this is why, you know, I think I go back to that Bible verse that, that we need to love God with all our hearts is because we need to understand the the depth of our emotions the depth of our souls and and all the things that it can um explain to us and here with this um with this uh speaker stopping by the woods you know stopping by the woods he's experiencing something that goes beyond the body and the mind he's experiencing something that's like speaking to his soul speaking to his emotions his heart the, the, the landscape is drawing something, you know, out of his, um, out of his being, something that he's in awe of. And to truly understand the awe-ness of the universe, it's to go into the realm of the soul and go into the realm of the heart and the raw emotions like love and happiness and joy and calmness. These are things that we feel deep within us. They're not, you know, sometimes you just have certain feelings that that's unexplainable. I mean, one, one best, the best way I can explain this, is like sometimes, you know, when mothers love their children so much that, 
you know, if the child is sick, they start to cry. If the, the child is in distress, they start to cry. And they, they get this surge of emotions that they can't explain. It's like when you have those emotions inside of your heart that your mind cannot comprehend. You know, when you feel like that, it's not your mind. It's not your body. This is something that's coming out of your soul, something that's coming out of your heart. And there are distinctions between the, the soul and and the heart, you know, the heart is purely, you know, th that's where all your emotions, your your feelings, the, the things that, that, that that's deep within you that you don't quite, you can't comprehend them because they go, you know, things like love and, and sadness and joy and these things that we feel. I mean, sometimes, you know, I felt like several emotions at one time. Like, can you, like, I I'm sure that, that you've probably felt anger and happiness at the same time or... Uh, love and and nervousness at the same time or a combination of different feelings um at the same time it's like when people cry tears of joy it's like you can be so happy that you start to cry and pe uh, people will register it as oh this person is sad but then the person will be like no 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 i'm extremely happy and and that that that's something that just like baffles you because you're like huh how can you feel happy and extreme joy and then you're crying um so th this poem here it's the speaker kind of like for no reason just stopping in the middle of the wilderness and feeling something experiencing something that that speaks to him deeply and you know he's saying that man i wish i could stop here and take it all in and just live here and just stop and take some rest but he can't because life life makes you focus on the mind and the body, you know, the body and the mind, you know, rational thinking and our physical strengths, you know, because you have to work, you have, you have obligations, you know, some people, you have to take care of you, you have to take care of your kids, you have to take care of your wife or, you know, vice versa, you know, you have to pay bills, you have to be ambitious, you have to pay your rent, you have to pay utilities, you have to save up for retirement, and there's all these types of worries and stresses and problems in life that you have to worry about, and so the soul and, and the heart is often neglected, and, and the heart becomes like, you know, you just never really pay attention to it, you know, most people are just so hyper-focused on success and power and stuff to do that... You truly never actually let, like, let true emotions and true feelings in, and and that's why a lot of people always end up unhappy because you really can't be happy and joyful and ecstatic about life when you're when you've pretty much cut off your heart and your soul from from your daily life because the rational mind is about all about rational thinking and getting things done and, and super focus, and the body is all about movement and, and and you know seeing the world and understanding the world and, and and processing the world and and so when it comes to joy and happiness and fulfillment these are the things that are, that are in the realm of the soul and the heart and yeah but again this is this is what i'm in terms of analysis this is what i'm picking up from this this poem by robert frost it's it's a person getting a sense of honest from nature that you really can't get anywhere else and you can break down the poem from what the the poem the, the poet is saying from his interpretation of what his horse is feeling from his interpretation of what he's seeing what he's understanding what he's getting from the the world around him from the fact from all of the things that are in his mind because in his mind he, he has to get back to work he has to get back to his life he has responsibilities he can't take rest in his heart he's like man this is so beautiful this is awestruck you know in his soul he's like wow this is out here is so beautiful the snow the woods all these things are just so great and yeah so within this poem you you can you know from the, the christian point of view you know to love god with all your heart soul and mind and strength it tells you that the human being um is in you know there's more parts of the human being than we think because the bible divides the human being into these categories you know the heart first like like love god with your heart first then the soul then the mind then strength so these are four categories of of, of how humans of the complexity of what it means to be a human and in the poem i do see 
you know, this reflected within the poem, uh, and, um, you know, it's a way to understand the poem to kind of see what the, the, the speaker is talking about, because I think a lot of people will be like, eh, why, what's so special about snow in the woods and things like that? And, and the reason why some people might say that is because we're, we're so focused on getting things done and ambition, especially if you live in the Western culture. The Western culture is all about prosperity, right? You know, you have to make your money, you have to be successful, you have to get the bag, uh, you have to achieve these things that society has set for us when these things are not what truly makes you happy. Because um, if that were the case, why do so many uh, millionaires and, and, and people of high status, a lot of times you'll hear on the news that, you know, they've committed suicide or they're unhappy or they're, you know, they're going through a divorce or some type of traumatic thing. And the people you think that would be the most happy and the most successful and the most joyful in society, a lot of times they're the ones that have to deal with the, the darkest things ever. Um, so... Yeah, there's a lot, again, there's a lot you can take from this poem. It's a very complex poem, and upon analysis and upon looking at the world, you can put some more into it to kind of, like, see what the speaker is going through, because the speaker himself, he's, like, looking at his horse, he's looking at himself, he's looking at his problems, he's looking at things that are going on in his mind, he's looking at the landscape, he's looking at the world around him, and he's processing all these things in a couple of seconds and in a moment to look at nature and to also witness and understand and filter everything around him and ultimately he comes to the conclusion well this is all great and all but i have responsibilities to, to take care of so yeah well that's my summary analysis of this work please remember to leave a like subscribe and or comment and i'll see you guys in the next video